Today we have powder based indirect CQRS system. Let us look at some of its components. This is the pressurized cell in which 2 kg powder has been filled. The instruction sticker is mounted onto this shell. The certifications are mentioned over here. The classes of fire on which it is applicable are mentioned here. Other specifications are mentioned at this point on the sticker and the maintenance instructions are also given here. Service and installation dates are mentioned here or contents of the cylinder have been mentioned over here. Let us look at the mounting bracket. The cylinder is mounted on a bracket which has a lock in top to prevent the cylinder from falling out. On the head of the cylinder, we have the indirect low pressure valve. This indirect low pressure valve has a pressure gauge on it, which can be checked in its pressurized condition for its working by using a magnet. The needle moves from its original position when magnet is applied, and once the magnet is removed, the needle should come back to its original position. This indicates a working pressure. On the head of the valve, you have a connection for heat sensing tube and then you have an integrated ball valve controlled by this lever. Initially when the cylinder is pressurized, this valve is kept closed. Once the HST connected to the head of the cylinder is pressurized to 15 bar, the safety screw can be removed and the valve can be turned by 90 degrees and secured into place with this safety screw so it cannot be tampered. Once the valve is open, the inside pressure and the HST pressure is now in equilibrium and the cylinder is commissioned. The valve also has a reed switch installed to it which will monitor the open and closed position of this valve and it can be monitored on the CQRS response panel. Now the working of the cylinder is pretty simple. Once the cylinder has been commissioned, HST moves into the demonstration area. When the HST detects a fire, a small rupture is created into the HST and it depressurizes. As the HST depressurizes due to the rupture, the pressure on the head of the valve is also removed. As the head of the valve gets depressurized, a small piston inside the valve moves up due to pressure within the cylinder. As the piston moves up, a separate port is opened for output of the extinguishing agent which is brought out through a wire a dip tube out of this port into the supply line which carries the agent up to the nozzle from where it is discharged. Now a cylinder has been fixed with the HST line. The HST has been pressurized to 15 bar using the NRV. The output has been connected to our SS supply line of 10 mm. Now to open the integrated ball valve, we remove the safety screw from the integrated ball valve lever and then we use a multi-tool to open it. As the valve gets open, the system is now commissioned and ready for use. This is the normal working state of the valve and the integrated ball valve position. As the safety screw goes in, the lever cannot be tampered with. Now inside, we have the HST going to the roof. across and in the center we have the spray nozzle for our powder disbursement and below this we have our fire source which we are going to extinguish with this nozzle as the flames rise the HST will burst and as the HST bursts the pressure in the HST drops and the valve gets opened on the top of the cylinder and MAP90 will be dispersed from this nozzle. Light fire 
just put in a little igniter in the heptane. Fire on, close door. MAP-90 can also be used in open environment. As the HST bursts, we will hear a loud pop sound. And that's the spray and a total extinguishment. Our fire has been extinguished, discharge has stopped, and there is no reignition. Thank you for joining us today.